Welcome biology students to this tutorial on how to make a, a pseudo box plot in Excel. A box plot or a pseudo box plot is the type of graph you want to make when you have a categorical variable on your x-axis and a continuous variable on your y-axis. The example I'll be showing you is when you have butterfly sex on the x-axis, female and male, and wingspan on the y. A true box plot looks like this, where each of your categorical classes has its own box. So in our case, picture male and female as the only two categories on the x-axis, each of them having a box. And there's a lot of information portrayed in these boxes. The line represents the median as opposed to the mean. The box around the median represents the lower and upper quartiles. The whiskers represent some sort of standard error or something like that. And then outliers are dots beyond the, the whiskers. Now unfortunately Excel cannot make uh, there we go, cannot make uh, box plots very easily at all. So what we're going to be making are what I'm calling pseudo box plots. They're going to portray the information you need, but they'll be uh, feasible to do. The reason we're not using a bar graph, which Excel calls a column graph, is because a column graph suggests that all of the data range between 0 at the bottom of the bar and the top of the bar is occupied by data. And that is not the case in some, in some circumstances, such as in ours. In our case, where we're plotting wingspan, all our butterflies' wingspans are in the range of 30 or 40 millimeters long. You will never find a butterfly of this species with a wingspan shorter than 20 millimeters. Remember, they're caterpillars as, as larvae, and then they become adults, and they never change their size once they're an adult. So it would be... Uh, it would be portraying the wrong... Uh, it would be misleading if we had a column graph. It would suggest that butterflies can be shorter, can be smaller than they actually can be. So we're going to use a box plot. Now, to create a box plot, you need to do a few intermediate steps. It's not as simple as making a scatter plot where every p every row is its own separate data point that is a dot in the in the graph. With a box plot, we're graphing a summary of the data. So we need to first summarize our data, and then we can portray that in the graph. So we're going to be summarizing wingspans of female and male butterflies. We're going to find their average, we're going to find their standard deviation, and we're going to find their standard error. Whoops. So I'm going to show you how to use formulae in Excel. There's two ways to do it. One is user-friendly but inefficient, and the other one is not user-friendly but efficient. I'm going to show you the user-friendly one so far uh, first that is slightly less efficient. So when you click on the F button when you're within whichever cell you want to insert the formula, it brings up this menu asking you to type a brief description of what you want to do. So I want to find the average of something. So I type in average and I hit go and it spits out a list of all the formulae in Excel that mention something about average. And when you scroll down on each of these uh, summaries of the formulae functions appear below. So you can find out which one you want. In our case we want the first one average, which is just a plain old average. So we hit OK. Now it comes up with a menu asking us what numbers we want to take the average of. So I click on this mini icon to select what I want to take the average of. I want the average wingspan of female butterflies. So I select wingspan of all my female butterflies. I've already sorted it so that all the females are up here. That's good. I don't need it to enter anything for number two because I've already entered all the numbers I want to take the average of. And I hit OK. Great. 39 millimeters. That's the average wingspan of females. Now we're going to do the same thing for males, <coughs> uh, but I'm going to show you the other way of inserting a formula. 
So instead of doing the point and click method of clicking on here and finding it, you just start by hitting the equal sign and start typing your formula function. So I happen to know that the command to take an average is called average. So I just start typing it. And as I type, all of the commands that start with those letters appear in a list that I can scroll up and down on with my cursor. And as I scroll up and down, it shows a brief description of each of them. This is the one I want, average. So I hit tab to select it. And it tells me now the syntax that it's expecting. So it, after the function average, it automatically put in a left parenthesis sign, and it's telling me this is where I hit my numbers I want to take the average of. Okay, so I just click and drag to select them all, and then I close my argument with the right parenthesis, and I hit enter. And there's my average. Average male is 40.6 millimeters long. Okay, now I need to calculate standard deviation. The reason I want standard deviation is uh, just as an intermediate step so I can calculate standard error. Average and standard error will both appear in the pseudo box plot. Standard deviation will not. After we calculate it and use it in the standard error calculation, we can ignore it from then on. So to calculate a standard deviation, I'll insert a standard deviation function. I'm asking it to show all the standard deviation functions. And this is the one I want. Plain old standard deviation. And I don't need to enter anything for number two. I just hit OK. Oh, I'm sorry, but I haven't entered my number one yet. So it's asking, what do I want to take the standard deviation of? I want you to take the standard deviation of the female wingspans. OK. And there it is. And I'll do it the fast way for doing the same thing for my male wingspans. Take the standard deviation of male wingspans. There we go. Good. So now I've got the standard deviation, so we're ready to calculate standard error. Standard error, as you know from the lab manual list of uh, equations, standard error is the standard deviation divided by the square root of your sample size. So to type in a formula like that, you start with the equal sign, and you click on whichever cell you want to insert into the formula. In this case, standard deviation. So it automatically says, put the value of cell E21, column E, row 21, into this formula. And then I type the slash for division. Now I want the square root of my sample size. So I start typing square root to see if there's a formula for it. And sure enough, there is. SQRT, left parenthesis, and now whatever number I want to take the square root of. So my sample size of female butterflies is nine butterflies. So I take the square root of nine. Enter. There we go, that's my standard error. I'll do that again for the males now. So it equals standard deviation divided by square root of in this case, eight. I have eight male butterflies. Enter. I have all the information I need for my box plot now, so let's get graphing. In the Insert tab, we're going to be inserting what it's calling a line with markers. Uh, we'll actually be deleting the line in one of our first steps to be left just with the markers that we'll add error bars onto. So we click on this, and we're going to tell it what data to graph. And it's all right here for us. We're going to be graphing the averages for female and male wingspan. OK. And we can see from the preview that it's done it just fine. Female, male on the x-axis, and those are accurate wingspan uh, values. I'm going to delete a couple of parts of the graph that frustrate me. So I click on the, the line here which highlights the two data points. And I right click to format the data series. What I'm going to do here is get rid of that line. Uh, a line between points on an x-axis implies continuity between x-axis values, such as if there were January, February, March. 
it makes sense to have a line connecting them because it's a time series. But in this case, there is no continuity between female and male butterflies. In other words, female butterflies do not later become male butterflies, uh, as far as I know. So, line color, no line. That's the best line color. And marker options, we're going to fill it with black. Uh, marker line color, we're going to outline our markers in black. Great. Okay, so we've got our average values. Now we're going to add on error bars. So whenever you're clicked anywhere in the in the chart here, these chart tool tabs are up here. We want the layout one. Layout has a lot of different stuff. This is what we're looking at, error bars. When you scroll down with error bars, Excel gives you lots of options of what kind of error bars you want. You want none of them. Excel does not calculate standard error in a way that is uh, what we want in biology. So we go to more error bar options. And once again, it gives us lots of different options of how it can calculate these error bars. None of them are accurate for our purposes. So we want to tell it exactly what standard error to use. So we click on custom and we choose specify value. And it asks us what what's the positive error value? In other words, what how did how long should these bars on top of the markers be? And we tell it these guys. This will be the positive error value for females and the positive error value for males. And as far as the negative error values or the bars that go down, we're going to be choosing the same two values. So the down air, the down bar for females, the down bar for males. In our case, they're mirror images. Positive and negative are the same thing. And it does it for us. We want both directions, error bars with caps. That's standard practice in biology. And there we go. There we go. That's how you make a pseudo box plot in Excel. As far as how to tidy up this graph, there's still a few things left to do but I'll let you watch the tutorial on how to polish up a graph so you can learn that stuff.